Google denied Kojima, developers and workers not warned, and some games are trying to find a way to make it all better. Today we're going to be talking about the aftermath of Google Stadia's announcement of it shutting down, so let's get to it. Unsurprisingly, the announcement of Stadia shutdown appeared to have been a bit of a shocker to a lot of people out there, not just us as consumers, but people who worked on Stadia itself. From what I've read online, they were only made aware of the actual closure itself about 45 minutes prior to it being announced to the public. And supposedly, that only applies to those who were able to attend a meeting. Those who didn't found out at the very same time we all did. And really, this is heartbreaking, because if you didn't know, the Stadia team, while may not be perfect, definitely worked hard on the project and were very passionate about Stadia itself. It's also abundantly clear that they really did care about the Stadia community as a whole. The problem definitely doesn't seem like it was the team behind Stadia, but rather the leadership in charge of it. So to anyone who worked on Stadia and made it what it was for us to enjoy it the way we did, thank you. It's also important to recognize the flip side of the coin that helps make a platform what it is, and that's game developers. Now that you know that not even the Stadia team was aware of this imminent closure, you best bet that none of the developers were either. Let's not forget that hours before the official announcement, Milestone SRL and PlayOn brought over Hot Wheels Unleashed to Stadia and made it a part of Stadia Pro. PlayOn is a pretty big publisher, and even they weren't aware of the shutdown happening. They started memeing on it immediately so, and I don't blame them. But there's also a lot of developers developers who didn't have a big publisher to rely on, and those people are the ones most affected. Clockwork Origins, the developer behind Tri-6 Infinite and Elemental War 2 tweeted out the following. That's really bad news and also a big surprise for us. Now we wasted a lot of time porting and developing for Stadia. Money we never get back for EW1, not sure what happens with Tri-6. Simon Roth, currently working on Soccer Story, really nailed down the message when sharing the following on Twitter. Every time something bad happens in games, the people affected, sometimes having their lives turned upside down, learn from the press or Twitter. No emails, phone calls, no heads up, no note on the website. I don't know anyone doing Stadia stuff right now who has heard anything more than what the press has, and it's not a Google thing, it's always like this. If this industry wants to retain skilled people, they need to start treating them with a gram of respect. Now, some developers have taken to Twitter to try and help the Stadia community out, and I also want to highlight those. First up, you have the developers behind Ember, who have stated you can hop onto Discord and request a Steam key since Stadia is shutting down. Huge props for that, I know it's not a perfect solution, but it's certainly one that'll help some out there. I'll put a link to the Discord down in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. IO Interactive, the devs behind Hitman, have stated that they heard the Stadia community and are currently looking for ways to continue our Hitman experience on other platforms. I'm sure more developers will also share similar sentiments to this, and I'll be sure to keep you all updated as they get shared. At this point, we've covered those who have made Stadia, those who have brought games to Stadia, but now let's talk about the players who actually play Stadia. And I want to point to one example of a player who's poured so much time into Stadia, so much so that it's got coverage on GamesRadar.com. You may recognize them as at its color TV over on Twitter and color over on YouTube. Nearly 6,000 hours poured into Red Dead Redemption 2's online. That is an immense amount of time to lose out on because Red Dead Redemption 2 does not offer cross progression. For his sake, I really do hope Rockstar can make an exception, but he's just one example of many people who poured hours upon hours into playing games on Stadia. And while some of those games you can extract the save data for and bring it over to PC, it's not always a guarantee to work based on the game and a lot of online progress just isn't shared. As a heads up, I will be making a tutorial video on how to get your save data, so stay tuned for that. But this is yet another example of how the closure affects people out there. Now the last story I want to cover here is one that I really hate to talk about because it really showcases just how bad Stadia was mismanaged. 9to5Google has heard from sources that indeed Google denied Kojima a title on Stadia. And according to said source, the reason for the denial was, get this... <laughs> the single-player nature of the game that led Google to canceling Stadia's collaboration with Kojima, the company believing there was no longer a market for solo experiences. Reportedly, the game had got an initial approval from Google and had begun early stages of development, however, shortly after the first mock-ups were shown mid-2020, Google scrapped the project entirely. Previous reports of this Kojima game actually stated that Phil Harrison was the one who made the final call to cancel it. 
In a world where Elden Ring, God of War, Ragnarok, and Zelda Tears of the Kingdom are some of the most hyped games to come out in a long while, it really goes to show just how out of touch the leadership was handling Stadia. Bill Harrison managed to mess up the PS3 launch, the Xbox One launch, and now Stadia's launch. Now I know I might sound a bit jaded talking about all this, but honestly speaking, I say that as a fan who wanted to see Stadia succeed. The team that made Stadia, the developers that brought games to it, and the players that formed the community around it really cared for this project, and it sucks to see it all go to waste. Knowing that it could have been something so much bigger really sucks to hear. I would have loved to see what a cloud exclusive game would have looked like. At least Kojima's project seems to have been picked up by Microsoft and is being worked on with Xbox Cloud Gaming. Either way, that wraps up this video. I'll be sure to cover any other major stories that come out, of which I'm sure there will be some. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful at all, be sure to hit that like button as it really does help the channel out. And if you're wanting more content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell as well. I just want to add a quick end of video message here. If any of you see anything in particular online that may be interesting or you may want to see coverage on, be sure to let me know either on Twitter or join our community discord, links in the description below. I'm trying my best to keep track of it all, but honestly, there's a lot of things being shared out there that I know I'm missing out on. As always, thanks for your help, thanks for watching, I hope you have a great day. This has been The Virtual Cloud, giving you the latest and greatest on everything cloud gaming related, and until next time, I'll catch you in the clouds.